Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I will show you how to use the column element in Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. The column element is one of the foundational design elements. Along with the container element, it forms the structural backbone of pages built in Avada. The column element always needs to be inside a container, and all other elements are then added inside the column. It therefore has a special place in the builder interface. Because it's a structural element, it's not in with the other design elements, but rather on the page itself, and is usually added as part of a container. Let's look at a blank page to see how this works. When I click on the Add Container link on the starter page, the dialog that appears allows us not only to add a container element, but also a range of container and column combinations. We can add an empty container, and this would be useful for example if we wanted to drag other columns into a container to separate them from other content, but usually we add a column element at the same time as we add a container. For this example, I'm just going to add a container with a single full width column, and here we can see the element controls for both the container on the right and the column on the left. In the middle is the Add Element button, which only appears when there is a column in the layout. If we mouse over the column controls, we can see the full range of them. The first one is for the column options, and if we click that we get the column element options panel in the sidebar. Columns don't have a background color by default, so let's give this column one so we can see it a bit easier. Coming back to the element controls, the next icon, Add Columns, allows us to add further columns in this container immediately after this one. If we click this, we get an Add Columns dialog, this time with all the different combinations of columns we can add. I'll just add two half columns. Then there is column size. Here we can resize any of our columns by choosing another size. If I just change this full width column to a half width column, and then click the next icon to clone the element, it is duplicated and added directly after it. If we want an easy way to later reuse a column, we can save it to the library with the library icon. We can of course delete the column with the delete icon, and if we want to move the entire column, we can grab the column with the drag column icon and reposition it in the container. When we do this, blue lines indicate where we can place it. OK, now we have the basics, so let's look at some content and see what options the column element has. I'll just go to the home page and edit this column on the right here. There are four tabs in this element, General, Design, Background and the Extras tab. Let's go through them. The first option on the General tab is Alignment, this allows you to specify the individual column's horizontal alignment within the container. It's set to default here, which takes its value from the container column alignment option, but it can be overridden on an individual column basis. In this case, that container option is set to stretch, and so the column runs the full height of the container minus the container padding. So if I return to the column and change the alignment options, we can see the column align itself differently to the container overriding the container option. I can set it to Flex Start, Center, or Flex End. I could also set it to Stretch, but in this case that's the same as setting it back to Default. OK, following this comes an option called Content Layout. This defines how the column content should be positioned. Column is the default where elements are stacked vertically. You can also choose Row, and with this elements are positioned horizontally if they fit. And finally, you can choose Block. If this is selected, it will not use flex positioning and will instead allow floated elements. If we just pop over to the restaurant demo, we can see an example of this with this nested column. It's set to block, which allows these five icon elements to be floated. Then comes content alignment. This only works on columns that are set to stretch, either individually in the column or in the parent container. And in our case, they are. So what this does is allow you to control how the content of the column aligns within the containing full height column. This column is currently set to center. Alternatively, you can place it at the top with flex start, at the bottom with flex end, or choose space between, space around, or space evenly. There are a lot of possible scenarios for this option, and it will greatly depend on your content. Following this is the column HTML tag option. Here you can choose the column HTML tag. The default is div, but you can also choose from Section, Header, Footer, Main, Article, Aside, or Nav. The next option is Link URL, which allows you to link the entire column to a URL. If you give it a link, you get two more options, 
link target, which allows you to specify whether that link opens in the same window, in a new tab on your browser, or even in the light box, and a link description option, which is used for accessibility by the addition of an ARIA label. The final options on this tab are the column visibility option, which allows you to choose which screen sizes the column is visible on, and the CSS class and CSS ID fields for further customization of the element with CSS. OK, so let's move to the Design tab. Here at the top we find the Width option, with the preset column sizes, plus options for Auto and Custom Width. If I select Custom Width, we can see that I can set the width of the column as any percentage I like. This can be used anywhere, of course, and can be particularly useful when building custom headers. If we choose the Auto option, instead of a fixed width size, the column will take up the space of the largest element in it that has a set width. There's not a great example of how to use it right here, but if we quickly look at the Pet Supplies website, we can see the left column in this sticky container here is set to auto, and so as it goes sticky and the image shrinks, the column shrinks with it, keeping the layout consistent. Then comes the Flex Grow and Flex Shrink options. This video is going to be long enough as it is, so I won't go into full details here about this. Basically, you can use these options to tell the browser what to do with columns when the sum of them in a row don't add up to 100%. See the Column Element Flex Grow and Flex Shrink options document for a more detailed explanation. Column spacing comes next. There is also a column spacing option on the parent container, and you can set your column spacing defaults there or in the Column Element default options. Here in the individual columns, you can override either of those settings with both a left and right column spacing option. You can also use the left and right purple drag handles in the Live Builder to adjust the column spacing. Below this are the margin and padding options. The margin option allows you to set the margins of the top and bottom of the column, which is spacing outside the column. For these, you can also use the top and bottom purple drag handles on the screen. The padding option controls the spacing inside the column. Here you can input values for all four sides of the column, or on the screen, you can use the blue drag handles. If I was going to add more columns in this container, I'd likely separate them by using column margins, either on the bottom of these ones, or the top of the following ones. If I was going to add a new container instead, I'd add the margins on the container. But you have a lot of flexibility, and once you realise what you can do with padding and margins, it's completely up to your own preferences. For more info on margins and padding, check out the link in the video description. Another thing to note at this point is that these first options on the Design tab have the responsive icon next to them. This means that all of these options can be set individually for large, medium and small screens. Please view the link docs to read more about this, but as an example if I just change to the mobile view, either directly here from the option or from the responsive icons in the toolbar, we can see that the screen icons in the options now change to show us that the values we set here will now only affect the small screen view. We can also see another option appear. This is called Order, and with this we can either drag the columns around, or we can set a number in the columns which will determine the order they will display, but just on mobile view. For other screen sizes, they would stay the same as they were. With this awesome feature you can create completely different layouts on different screen sizes with the same elements. We could also change the column size, adjust the paddings and margins, and all these changes would only apply to this view. This feature provides a staggering amount of flexibility in your layout, so make sure to check it out from the link below. OK, I'll just go back to desktop view, and moving on, the next option is hover type. This is a hover effect for the entire column, and as the description explains, this will only really work if you have a background colour or image and or a border enabled. It's also important to note that this will disable links and hover effects on elements inside the column. If we just move over to the Courses page, we can see three columns here that have background images. You can select from Zoom In, Zoom Out, and Lift Up. And for this effect, I will just apply Zoom In to one of them to demonstrate. And as you can see, it zooms in as I hover. Note also how the links here are still active. This is because they are set on the nested column, and not the column itself. Column border size is the next option, and with this you can set borders independently on all four sides of the column, and if you add a border size value, you can also choose the colour and style of that border. If I move to the contact page, we can see that the column holding the mail form has a subtle one pixel border. Following this is the border radius option, which is also in use here. 
With this you can control the radius of all four corners of the column independently, but here it has an even 8 pixel border radius all around. The next option here enables a box shadow on the column, and if you do enable that you get another 5 options with which you can style it to your liking. Watch the how to use the audio element video linked here to see a cool example of that effect. Z index, or Z index, is the penultimate option on this tab, and controls the stacking order of elements on the page. For more information on Z-Index, watch our How to Use Z-Index in Avada video, linked below. Overflow is the last option, and this is where you set the value for the column's Overflow CSS property. This can be default, visible, scroll, hidden, or auto. The CSS default for this is visible. If you're not sure what this is, you can just leave it on default. OK, then we have the Background tab, which has a huge range of options. For a complete rundown on this feature-rich tab, which is found on both columns, nested columns and containers, please watch the How to Use the Container and Column Background Options video, linked here. The final tab in the Column element is the Extras tab. This starts with rendering logic. You can apply a huge range of conditional rendering statements to the column with this, and this has a video of its own, linked below. The Position Sticky option is next, and this of course enables the column to be sticky. See the How to Use Sticky Columns in Avada video for full details of how you can use this. After this is the Position Absolute option, which you can turn on to set the container's position to absolute. An absolutely positioned element is removed from the normal document flow, and no space is created for the element in the page layout. The element is positioned relative to its closest positioned ancestor. Then comes the filter types. This also has a video of its own, so check that out. But basically you can apply a range of filters to the column in both normal and hover states. And after this comes the transform effects. These are similar to filters in that you apply them to the normal and hover state of the column. But with these you can change a wide range of transformative effects to the column itself. Check out the how to use column transform effects in Avada video for full details. Under the transform options there is a motion effects option. Here you can add a range of motion effects to the column. Again, for full details of these effects, check out our linked video. But basically you can add scroll effects, mouse effects, or infinite animation effects. Try them out, they're very cool. At the bottom of the tab are the usual animation options. There's a video for those as well, so go watch that if you want full details. Finally, let's look at the global options available for this element. If I open the global options in the sidebar here, we can scroll to the bottom to find the Avada Builder Elements tab and under this we can find the global options for columns. There are four global options for columns. The first is column margins. As we can see here, columns have 20 pixels bottom margin by default, and we can adjust this here, or we can control it on a column by column basis as we go. Then there is the default column spacing. This can be overridden both in individual containers by using the column spacing option there, or in individual columns by using the left and right spacing there. Then there is the column width on medium screens option, and here by default, columns on medium screens inherit their width from the large screen layout. But if you prefer, you can have them go full width. And similarly, there is the column width on small screens option. The default for these is that columns revert to full width on small screens, but this gives you complete control over your defaults. OK, it should be clear by now that columns in conjunction with containers are the primary structural elements with regard to layout in Avada. By inserting a range of columns into your containers, and utilising the layout options available in Avada, you will be able to achieve virtually any layout you can imagine. And with the range of design features for the column element, you can create some fantastic effects. And the column element's little brother, the nested columns element, extends the layout capabilities of the column even more. Please see the links below the video for more information on that element. OK, this concludes our video on how to use the column element in Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.